This is going to be a video on how to do basic value or the underpainting in a cylinder or simple object. Before you start painting, you should put your name on the back of your canvas board or masonite with permanent marker since these all look similar and you might get confused with another student. When you start painting, it's easiest to cover the board with a solid dark color. You can do this with a roller if you have one, or you can use a paintbrush of any size to accomplish this task as well. It's okay if there's a texture because most painters allow the paintbrush strokes to show in the final image. Similarly, you can use either the front or the back of a masonite board, whereas the canvas board you can only use the front. Once the paint is dry, you should use a charcoal pencil, white in this case so it shows up, or a light colored chalk pastel to block in the image of the object that you're going to paint. You need to know that you should be looking at the cylinder live, or if you don't have access to that, you can print out a printed image of the cylinder. This can also be done with a simple object if the cylinder is too easy for you. Next, use some plastic paint containers, at least three, and mix a light, medium, and dark of the background color you used for the color field in the background. You can use any old Tupperware container or old plastic container with a lid that would work. You will sparingly use true white and the pure darkest color. Most of the painting will use the three colors you've mixed. You need to make sure you mix enough paint for the painting you're working on. Forgetting to do this will mean more paint mixing than painting. And that's no fun. Now I'll get out my paintbrushes and palettes so that I can start painting. As you start the underpainting, mix enough water with the paint in order for it to be the consistency of Elmer's glue, as that will make the best edges and conserve paint as you work. The paint should also be about halfway up the bristles of the brush if you can help it. As you get immersed in painting, you may get some in the ferrule, the metal part, but it's much harder to clean later, so be careful. I always start painting in the background so that I can paint the objects on top of the background. I feel like it's easier to do. Additionally, it's much easier to start the painting with a dark background as a beginner. Later you can try starting with a lighter background, but it's much harder. Really look at the image that you're painting and think about where the dark and light areas are. Here I forgot about that and ended up removing paint with a paper towel because I made the value too light in the area where the cylinder was already going to be light. As you paint, you should allow a little of the original color to show through what you're painting as it will help unify the painting. Additionally, create a gradation in value in each area of the painting will help create interest as well as allowing for enough contrast to see each part of the painting. In this case, the cylinder, the table, the shadow, and the background. When you paint the table, think of the same thing. Look at the image to see where the table changes in value. It should get darker as it goes away from the light source. As you paint, you should also paint over the shadow as there should be table value in the shadow. Plus, since you know how to draw, you can block it in later. You should make the paint gradate or go from lighter to darker. Since you use a darker color in the background, you can just remove some of the paint from the brush with a towel to make the table get darker. When you get near the edges of the object, slow down and use the side of the brush to make a straight, crisp edge. Remember, if you make mistakes, you can wipe things off with a paper towel or rag as you work, or you can paint over parts as the acrylic can be applied opaquely if you make it thick enough. Notice how I used a slightly lighter color for the table to differentiate it from the background. After the background is painted, you can start painting the cylinder. It doesn't really matter which part you start with, but I'm starting with the top of the cylinder because the background is already dry. Notice that I started with a lavender color and then worked toward the white where the light source was brightest. The body of the cylinder should follow the light source from light to dark as well, and the shadow should have enough contrast to be seen from the cylinder body, even though the photo may not show it. 
This is also why we use Photoshop to alter images in order to see the difference between objects that may not translate when the image is printed. Again, as you paint the edges, take your time and make sure the brush is juicy or more wet than when you blended. The body of the cylinder should be painted with a middle tone. Use the darker purple to make a value transition. Don't use the pure dark purple yet. Remember, as you paint the corners and edges, you need to work carefully, which means slow down. Here I use that medium dark purple to get a gradation across the cylinder body. It will take quite a bit of time to develop the values on most parts of the painting. Just be patient. As you paint, you will realize there will be areas that don't have enough contrast to see one part of the object from another, or from the object to the background or shadow. You will have to go back and add lighter or darker values to make the contrast strong enough to see each part of the object. I painted each part of the composition twice, mostly because I had to work on contrast. This might happen to you too. Additionally, make sure you paint the edges of the painting as you work. You can create the same values that are in the painting, or you could use one of the colors in the painting. I normally use the darkest colors if I don't do a gradation. As you paint, make sure you unify the colors in the work. You may have to go back to different areas and use more paint to fix areas where you made mistakes. You can see I put more paint in the table and the background in order to establish better contrast to see the areas of the painting. When I finished painting this underpainting, I noticed that the cylinder is no longer perpendicular to the table, so I will have to fix that as I create glaze layers. Last, block in the shadow again with chalk pastel. Then, paint the shadow by using the color closest to the pure purple. Use the color in the entire shadow, but make sure some of the table color still shows through. You should use this color in both the umbra and penumbra. When the color is dry, you can use the pure purple to make the umbra darker. When you get to the edge that is very thin, you will need to use the very edge of the paintbrush. Be careful and go slow so you don't make mistakes. If you make a mistake, you will have to repair what went wrong by erasing with paper towel or adding more paint. You will figure it out, just keep trying. You may also want to add the pure purple to the area directly behind the lightest part of the cylinder to create enough contrast between those two areas. This will also help unify the painting where the shadow and that background area are now the same pure purple. As you work, you will notice that not all of the paint will come out of the paintbrush. This is okay. The paint may stain the bristles, especially if the dioxazine purple is used, but as long as you wash out the brush completely each time you work, there won't be contamination the next time you paint. The underpainting took me about 30 minutes. It may take you longer as some of you may not have painted much or at all before. But again, just be patient, keep trying, and you'll do great.